Here's how web links are managed in Securely Classroom. From the web links menu, we have a list of sites that we've previously saved, as well as ones that have been saved and shared from other users. If I want to add a new website, I'll use the Create button. And from here, I can copy and paste a URL or manually enter a website. Uh, the description is optional. And we click Save. Let's create another one. And I will create three sites, and we'll do them all on study skills sites. And now my sites are here and available for the push URL and other functions like, uh, like site lock. In addition to adding individual sites, we can also add sites to a folder that we call a web collection. So to create a web collection, you select multiple sites and then add them to a folder. So let's look for the sites that I just created, which were all related to study skills. So I'll make the list shorter or make them easier to find by typing study in the search box, hit enter, and now I've narrowed my search results. And now I can take the three sites that I just created, click create collection, and call them study skills. Now that I have a web collection created, I can use that in different areas. I could also clone a site or a web collection with the clone button. So if you have different sets that you want to create that just vary by a few sites, you can use one as a template, clone it, and then modify it from there. Once you've created a web collection, you can click on it to edit it, and now we get a list of the sites that are contained inside that web collection. And this is also a place where I can add additional sites to it. So to add additional sites to it, I still have the option of, of using copy and paste to put the sites in one at a time, and I get the list of existing web links that are already in the system. And then any site you can select and remove it from the collection with the remove button here. So now that I've created both some sites and some collections, they're available in teacher tools and other areas. So when I start my class, and I go to either site lock or push URL. You can see there's my study skills site collection that I created. This is another area where when you have a long list to work through, you can make use of the search box here. So now I've limited it to just sites and collections that have the word study, making it much easier to find. I also have the option here of saying my web links only which will show just links and web collections that I created myself. So now I can select the study skills site, sites from the collection, push URL, and that should open on all those devices. Again, if we go to the detail view, you can see multiple sites open. You can see all the tabs. Um, just by way of review, you can close those tabs with the trash can, and that's it. The other item that we can manage from web links is a custom block list. So each teacher has the ability to create a list of sites that you don't want to be used during your classes only. So sites added to this list are blocked when you run your class session and you have an option with each class session as to whether or not to enforce your block list. So there may be sites that you want to block. They're allowed through your school's uh, filter, content filter. You just want to block them during one or more of your classes, then you would add them to the list here. So maybe YouTube is permitted through your filter, but you want to make sure that it's blocked during your classes. In addition to typing them in manually here, we have this handy button that says Add from Recently Closed. The idea being that if you've recently used that trash can icon and you've closed a website on a student device from the tabs list, it's probably something you don't want during future classes. So this allows you to view ones that you've recently closed during your class sessions, and then you can add them to this list. So we'll go ahead and add golf.com 
and NBA.com and NFL.com. Now, with those sites added to the list, let's look at the start class options. And you'll see when starting a class, one of your options is to enforce your custom block list. It's on checked off by default, and it will remember it between sessions. And usually that's something that you want to have enabled.